Hey guys, welcome to section 7.3. In this section, we'll talk about how to solve rational equations. Let's get started. So first, we'll actually have to review some stuff from section 2.1, where we solve equations that look like this. 2 thirds x minus 5 over 6 equals 3 over 4. So the first thing we always did back then was we found the LCD of the denominator. I guess I, I forgot to write that part here. But you want to find the LCD of two third, or sorry, 3, 6, and 4, which turns out to be 12. 12 is the smallest number that can be div divided by 3, by 6, or by 4. So what we do is we first find the LCD of the denominator. Then we multiply every single term of the equation by that LCD. So I took 2 thirds x, multiplied it by 12. I took the 5 sixths, multiplied it by 12. Took the 3 fourths, multiplied it by 12. And when we do that, we're able to basically get rid of the denominators because 3 goes into 12 four times. So the 3 is canceled out. 6 goes into 12 two times, 6 goes away. 4 goes into 12 three times, 4 goes away. Now what we're left with, or in this case, we're always left with a linear equation, or at least we were back then. Then 4 times 2x gives us 8x, negative 2 times 5 gave us 10, 3 times 3 gave us 9. This is a very nice, easy linear equation to play with. So we add the 10 over to the other side, 9 plus 10 gives us 19. And then in order to get rid of this 8, we divide it over the 19. So we get x equals 19 over 8. Hopefully you remember the lesson that anytime we solve an equation, we should always, always, always check our answer. So here we do the same thing. I copied down the equation again, I replaced x with 19 over 8, did some arithmetic, which you can verify. And at the end, I got 3 fourth equals 3 fourth. What we needed to take away from this was that whenever we have a number equaling a number, and that's a true statement, the number that we originally plugged in is indeed a solution to our equation. So how do we apply that to a question that looks like this? This is a section 7.3 question. The exact same idea needs to be followed. So here we have a, a rational equation. And the way we solve it is by first getting rid of the fractions. Anytime you have a fraction, you want to get rid of it. The LCD of the denominator is x plus 2, because x plus 2 goes into itself, and x plus 2 goes into itself. So you just have x plus 2 getting multiplied twice. So I multiply the first term by x plus 2, I multiply the second term by x plus 2, and I multiply the right-hand side by x plus 2 as well. When I do that, this denominator and this denominator cancel with the x plus 2 that we just multiplied by. And here we're left with 5x plus 5, because that's it. These two terms canceled each other out. The 3x times x plus 2 is left over in the middle. And then here, these two terms canceled out to leave just x squared behind. In the next step, oops. In the next step, we can distribute the 3x into x plus 2, yielding 3x squared plus 6x equals x squared. We can combine like terms. So 3x squared goes first. 5x plus 6x is 11x. Uh, the 5 just stays. The x squared stays. And hopefully at this stage you can recognize, or it's becoming more obvious, that this is a quadratic equation. How do we solve quadratic equations? We get all the terms to one side. So that's exactly what we did here. We got the x squared to the left. 3x squared minus x squared will give me 2x squared plus 11x plus 5 equals 0. Now we think again, is there a GCF? No. Uh, how many terms? Three terms. Can I use one of the formulas? No, because 2 is not a perfect square. Is a equal to 1? No, it's not equal to 1, so we have to use split the middle. So 2 times 5 gave me 10. And then I wrote out all the factors of 10 on the right-hand side here. 1 and 10 add up to give me 11. So those are the two factors I used. And then factor by grouping gave me 2x plus 1 times x plus 5 equals 0. Now at this stage, we can use the zero product property. 
to set 2x plus 1 equal to 0 and to set x plus 5 equal to 0, which gave us x equals negative 1 half and x equals negative 5. These are potential solutions. We don't know that there are solutions or not until we plug them in. So that's what I did here and on this side. So after plugging the numbers in, we got that in fact both of these were solutions because for x equals negative 1 half, I got 1 sixth equals 1 sixth. And for x equals negative 5, I got negative 25 over 3 equals negative 25 over 3. You'll notice that this gets to be fairly involved. So please make sure that you practice doing this in your homework. Don't think that all of a sudden on the day of the test, you'll magically be able to pull this kind of stuff or detail out. Make sure that you practice checking in your answers and don't run away from them because they're fractions. You still have to practice with them. For the next example, we have x over x plus 2 plus 1 over x plus 1 equals 5 over x plus 1 times x plus 2. So again, I, I look at the least common denominator, or I try to find one. So what would I multiply by to get rid of all three of these denominators? Well, in order to get rid of x plus 2, I would need to multiply all terms by x plus 2. In order to get rid of x plus 1, I would need to multiply all terms by x plus 1. Now notice that if I multiplied by x plus 2 and x plus 1, that will get rid of this denominator as well. So that's exactly what I did. The least common denominator was x plus 1 times x plus 2, and I multiplied that by the first term, by the second term, and by the last term. And when we did, this entire denominator canceled with this term, only the x plus 1's canceled here, only the x plus 2's canceled here. And now let's write down what we have left over. x times x plus 1, that goes here. 1 times x plus 2, that goes here. And then finally we have 5 left over on the right hand side, so that goes there. Now we can distribute the x and distribute the 1, giving us x squared plus x plus x plus 2 equals 5. We can combine like terms, x plus x will give us 2x. And again here, I'm hoping you guys are recognizing or getting better at recognizing that this is a quadratic equation. The way we solve them is by setting them equal to zero, so I need to subtract the five over. Two minus five gives me negative three. Now in order to factor this, I have no GCF because one of the terms, the leading coefficient is one. Um, I cannot use the formulas because the signs don't match. The leading coefficient is 1, so I can use the AC method. Now here, I'm starting to not necessarily skip steps, but do some of these problems in my head. And I'm hoping that you've practiced enough of these questions to where you're not looking at this saying, what on earth just happened? So we're looking for factors of negative 3 that add up to positive 2. And the two factors are positive 3 and negative 1. And by the, Z, uh, the zero product property, the ZPP, we see that x can either be equal to negative 3 or x can equal 1. Now again, these are potential solutions, so they need to be verified. So you plug in negative 3, you plug in 1, and both sides give us a true statement. So x equals negative 3 is, is a solution, and x equals 1 turns out to be a solution as well. Next example. Uh, comparing this example with the one we just did, I want you to think of, or look at the denominator here, here, and here, and then compare that against the denominator here, here, and here. So we have a linear term here, we have a linear term here. Linear in the middle, linear in the middle. Now this is actually quadratic, I just gave it to you already factored. Here I have a quadratic as well, but I have not factored it yet. So how do I get this to look like this? Well, I just have to factor it. So I rewrote the question, and then I'm factoring the denominator, x squared minus 3x plus 2 factors using the AC method into x minus 2 and x minus 1. And now we're back to solving exactly the same problem as before. Nothing changes. We multiply each term 
by the least common denominator, which is the denominator that will cancel out each one of these terms in the bottom. So I multiplied everything by x minus 1 and x minus 2. x minus 2, x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 1. Here, everything canceled out. Here, only the x minus 2 canceled out. And here, only the x minus 1 canceled out. And then if we take inventory of what's left over, here I'm left with x times x minus 2. That goes here. Minus 1 times x minus 1. That goes here. And then just the 11 is left over, so that stays there. Now we have x squared. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Again, at this stage, we should start to recognize that this is going to be a quadratic equation, which we solve by setting it equal to 0 and then factoring. So I combine like terms first, negative 2x minus x give me negative 3x. And then in the next step, I brought the 11 over to the other side. 1 minus 11 gave us negative 10. Now again, using the AC method, no GCF formulas don't work because the signs don't match up. A is 1, so I can factor directly. x minus 5, x plus 2 equals 0. Using the zero product property, we get x minus 5 equals 0, which indicates x equals 5. x plus 2 equals 0 gives us x equals negative 2. These are potential solutions. To verify if they really are solutions, we plug them into the original equation that we were given, and we get that indeed both x equals 5 and x equals negative 2 are solutions. In this question, uh, we have something similar to the one we just did, where we have to factor the denominator before we can uh, multiply by the least common denominator. So I factored this into x plus 6 times x minus 3. And we notice here I have an x plus 6, x plus 6, x minus 3, x minus 3. So if I were to multiply by x plus 6 times x minus 3, I would be able to cancel out all three denominators. So that's exactly what we did in the next step. We multiplied each term by x plus 6 and x minus 3. Here the plus 6 canceled out, minus 3 canceled out here, and here everything canceled out. Again, taking inventory of what we have left, we have x minus 3 times x minus 3, so that goes here. Here we have x minus 2 times x plus 6, that goes here. And on the right hand side we just have x squared. So like we did in the previous question, we multiplied all this out. And here is where, I mean in these super long questions, this is where the formulas come in to help you. x minus 3 times x minus 3, you can use the square of differences formula, or a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So that gives us x squared minus 6x plus 9. This is just something that we have to FOIL out because none of the formulas apply here. So if I FOIL it out, I get x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 12. The right-hand side remains the same as x squared. Combining like terms and cleaning everything up gave me 2x squared from x squared plus x squared. The negative 6x and the positive 6x canceled and then you're just left with negative 2x here. 9 minus 12 is negative 3, equals still an x squared. And now again, recognize that this is a quadratic equation, so I have to take this x squared and move it over to the left-hand side. So that yields x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Easy to factor, factors into x minus 3 times x plus 1, and at this stage, we can use the zero product property to say that x minus 3 is equal to 0, which would indicate that x is equal to 3. x plus 1 is equal to 0, which indicates x would equal negative 1. As always, these are potential solutions. We have to check to see if they are solutions or not. And this is the first example where you see um, when we plugged in 3, into the denominator in the middle term, 3 minus 3 gave us a 0. We are not allowed to divide by 0. So no matter what you do, 
there is no way that you can plug in 3 into this equation. So what that tells us is that 3 is not a solution. Another way to say that is that it is a false solution. And then a third way yet is to say that it is an extraneous solution. Whereas if we plug in negative 1, we do end up getting the same thing on both sides. So x equals negative 1 is indeed a solution. And this is the first time I'm making the case why it is so important to always check your work. Because in some cases, you might see that, hey, both the numbers or both of the potential solutions end up being solutions. Whereas in this case, one of these was not a solution. You can't just by looking at the equation say, oh, this equation will have only one solution. So you have to have to have to check your answers. Always, always, always check your answers. Now, if you're looking for steps, because these questions do get very long, these are the more or less the steps that I follow in my head. The first thing I always do is I factor all the denominators out. The second thing, I always find the LCD, again, of the denominator, least common denominator. Then I multiply all the terms of the equation by that LCD, the thing that will cancel out all my denominators. Then once I do that, I cancel all the terms that can be canceled. That was the whole purpose of multiplying all the terms of the equation by the LCD, so that we can get rid of the denominators. Then whatever is left over, multiply all of it out and simplify. I mean, combine like terms, distribute if you need to, use the formulas, do, do whatever you need to in order to simplify what you have left over. And at that stage, you should be left with a simple equation, either a linear or a quadratic equation. And then we've dealt with linear equations in chapter 2. In section 7.1, we talked about quadratic equations. So solve them using whatever method you prefer. And then finally, check your answers. This, this is in big bold letters, big capital letters, because this is the last step where students lose steam by. And then this is where people get caught. So here's an equation where I, I, this is probably the more complicated type of equation that you're probably going to see on your test. But I listed all the steps out so you see them in action as well. So when I look at this problem, the first thing I need to do is factor all the denominators. x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares, so I factor it into x plus 2, x minus 2. x squared minus 4x minus 12, I can use the AC method. That factors into x minus 6 times x plus 2. Finally, x squared minus 8x plus 12, using again the AC method, factors into x minus 6 and x minus 2. Now, in order to find the LCD, uh, it helps to recognize that from this denominator, I'm missing an x minus 6 term. I do have x plus 2 and x minus 2, but I don't have an x minus 6. In this denominator, I'm missing an x minus 2. And in the last one, I'm in fact missing an x plus 2. So the LCD is the product of all three terms, x plus 2, x minus 2, and x minus 6. Because if I multiply all terms of the equation by the LCD, I did that, and in order to preserve space, I multiplied everything inside the brackets. And then here as well. The next step is to cancel everything that can be canceled. So here, x plus 2 cancels with x plus 2, x minus 2, x minus 2, x plus 2 with x plus 2, and x minus 6 with x minus 6, x minus 2, x minus 2, x minus 6, x minus 6. And then write down what you have left over. So 4 times x minus 6 from here, 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 2 from the middle term, x plus 2, x plus 2 from the right-hand side. Next task is to multiply all the terms out and to simplify. So the first piece just requires a simple distribution. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. Here, again, I can leverage my knowledge of the formulas. This is a square of differences. So I can use the formula a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So that gives me x squared minus 4x plus 4. 
Here, again, if you know your formulas, you would recognize that this answer has to be the same as this answer, except the minus 4 has to be a plus. Now we clean this up further, we distribute the 2 in, then we combine like terms, and at this stage, once everything has been moved to one side, we, le we are left with a quadratic equation, x squared minus 8x minus 20 equals 0. And now the next step is to solve that equation, whether it's linear or quadratic, using the appropriate methods. This factors into x minus 10 and x plus 2 using the AC method, equaling 0. Using the zero product property, we get x equals 10 and x equals negative 2. These are potential solutions. We don't know that there are solutions or not, so we have to check our answers. So here I checked uh, 10. 10 did turn out to be a solution because at the end I was left with 3 over 8 equals 3 over 8. When I plugged in negative 2, I ended up getting a 0 in the denominator on the very first term. Negative 2, the quantity squared is 4. 4 minus 4 gives me 0. We are not allowed to divide by 0. So what that tells us is that x equals negative 2 is not a solution. Another way to talk about it is that it is a false solution or that it's an extraneous solution. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out. Have a nice day.